kicks in. So. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I, my, I, you know, I really wish I'd. This is a lot easier. And I, I started to get to start with this simply because I was going to be doing this. I just was hoping that we could do it so that the volume, the sound wouldn't change. But, you know, it's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right. Okay, let me know when you're ready. We ready? Okay. We're picking back up with uh, number D. The structure of the congregation, again, that singular of Israel, was 3.5 million strong. Moses was the bishop or the overseer, and Joshua was the pastor. The relationship between them and their roles in leading Israel was clearly established in Exodus 17. And I've already talked to you a little bit about that. That's where Moses was on the mountaintop and Joshua was, was leading the troops in the valley. That's Exodus 17. Moses stood on the mountaintop, provided the covering authority. Joshua led the people in the battle down in the valley. The congregation of Israel had 12 tribes. So the church had 12 main congregations with one tribe represented by two halves. Why is that the case? Because the, the former 12th tribe was no longer considered one of the 12 tribes. It was set apart for the priesthood. So, the congregation had 12 tribes with one tribe represented by tribe represented by two halves. Those are Joseph's son Ephraim and Manasseh. Ten tribes plus Joseph's two sons received equal shares as tribes even though they were called half tribes. The 13th tribe of Levi received no inheritance of land except the cities of refuge. The priesthood and the Levites, the tribe of Levi, were expected to live dispersed among the people. So the, 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 the five-fold ministry, the leadership, the priesthood, did not receive an inheritance. They were supposed to be provided for by the other 12 tribes or the 10 tribes plus the two half-tribes. So Joseph was the 11th tribe. Levi was the 12th tribe. Levi was separated out to be the 13th tribe, the tribe of the ministry. And then, the, then Joseph, because of his service to Israel, his two sons were each given the same status as a full tribe, even though they were technically half-tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. Now, I'm, I'm trying to be a little patient with that because I want you to get that. That was the structure that God used to establish the structure of how to lead a single congregation. His congregation or church in the wilderness, that was his structure. One senior leader, bishop, uh, one, or excuse me, one bishop, that was Moses, who was the senior leader. And then under him was the pastor or senior pastor, Joshua. And then there were 12 tribes, 13 count the tribe of ministry, the priesthood. And each one of them was headed by a prince. Okay? Or a senior, senior elder. In addition, the tribes were broken down into different levels of leadership. The original structure and the original leaders were a product of the growth of the nation or the congregation of Israel from a family of 70, which is a father, his 12 sons, their wives, their sons, their children. When his family entered Egypt, they totaled approximately 75 souls or 70 who came with Jacob into Egypt plus the family or the tribe of Joseph. When Israel left Egypt 430 years later, the approximate size of the congregation of Israel can be estimated based on this. 
The Bible says there were 603,550 men 20 years old and older, not counting the tribe of Levi. A very conservative estimate would place the size of Israel at over 3.5 million men, women, and children. They would have easily been over 4 million strong, counting the tribe of Levi. Now, how did I come up with that? Here's how it happens. There were 603,550 men, 20 years old and older. You could be married younger, but you did not go to war until you turned 20. So this 603,550 men were all family men. They were family men. There was virtually no such thing as a man not being married. There were more women than men. And for the future of the nation, it was expected you marry and produce children. Obviously, there were situations of barrenness occasionally. We know that Sarah was barren. We know that Re uh, uh, Rachel was barren. We know that Rebecca was barren. We know that Elizabeth, mother of John the Baptist, was barren. We know that Hannah... Mother of Samuel was barren. So it is possible that a man, and a man was married but didn't have any children, but it was not a common thing. So therefore, if you, if you double 603,550 men because of wives, that's uh, 1.2 million. If, if, they, if you understand that they had more children than we normally do nowadays, they probably, you look at, look at uh, Jacob, he had 12 sons. Then it is very likely that they had probably somewhere counting the girls, which weren't usually mentioned, no offense. Uh, counting the girls, they were probably anywhere from four to eight different children per family. So let's say just four. So you got two parents, that's 1.2 million. Four children would be another 2.4 million. You had that, add that to the 1.2, you got 3.6 just for those 20 to, to 50. Well, what about those who were older than 50? You want to know where the word elderly came from? Biblically, you were, you were an elder at age 50. So you went to fight at 20. You were no longer expected to fight at 50. You were now an elder. Elders weren't counted in that number of 603,550 men because they were the army of Israel. There were 603,550 fighting men, men of fighting age in Israel, when they came out of Egypt, and that doesn't count the 13th tribe of Levi. We don't know how many there were in the tribe of Levi, at least uh, not in this context. So if you add in Levi and all his children, and add all of those over 50 that weren't in that 603,550, it is easy to see that Israel was probably a nation of over 4 million people. So God's first church was over 4 million people. His, his church structure that he created to lead that church could handle a single group of people functioning as one group of over 4 million. Praise God. Now, is it not possible then that that same structure, when applied to Singapore, could enable you to reach all the people that God wants to reach in Singapore and to take care of them properly. Praise God. The structure of the congregation of Israel did not change with growth. God's structure was clearly implied even when Israel was only a family. One father... A mother, 12 sons, who married, had 